In this section, I'd like to do a comparison between a shapefile coverage and geodatabase in terms of topology. So here we have a comparison between our three different generations of Esri software, ArcInfo, ArcView, and ArcGIS, and the data models or file formats that go along with them, so the coverage, the shapefile, and the geodatabase. And what I want to do here is use the same data, actually it's the same data that I'm showing in this diagram here, this data set, and I'm going to show it to you in the three different file formats and compare them. So the data set I'm going to use for this section is from the Koffler Scientific Reserve, also known as Jokers Hill. This is a piece of land that was donated to the University of Toronto by Murray and Marvell Koffler. Murray Koffler founded the Shoppers Drug Mart chain in Canada and uh, made a lot of money doing that and had a lot of uh, land and, and properties in various parts of the world, I'm told. And so uh, at, at some point in the 90s, he donated that to the University of Toronto and it's been used as a scientific reserve for study since then. If you're wondering why it gets called Joker's Hill, the story that I've heard is that the Kofflers owned a lot of horses, including one named Joker, and Joker used to like to go up to the top of this hill on the property where they eventually built their home, and so they referred to the property as Joker's Hill. It's a beautiful property, I've been there many times, and it has a lot of different land cover types, as we'll see. So this is a land cover data set that was created quite a long time ago now by a graduate student at the time who was hired for the summer to go and map the different land cover types. He was fairly new to GIS at the time and he came to ask my advice about how he should do things. And uh, I always use this as an interesting data set because it really works in terms of topology as we'll see. Nothing against the guy that created it, he did a great job and uh, he was very conscientious about it. So this is the earliest version of the data that was first created. And uh, when I asked him about things like, you know, did you build topology? He said, what's that? And so it really indicated to me that as someone that was new to it, that uh, he hadn't yet learned about topology or the importance of it or how it might be useful to him. So let's, let's see how that plays out here. So I've created three different versions of this data to go along with our coverage, shapefile, and geodatabase. And I've even color coded them according to what Esri uses. So Esri's icon for a coverage is yellow. So that's the coverage there. Their icon for shapefile is green, so that's our shapefile. And then the uh, geodatabase is kind of a gray blue, so I've tried to use a blue there so you can tell the difference. So this coverage, this all represents this one land cover class or land cover layer, if you want to think of it that way. Um, this feature class is one map layer or feature class is the more technical term or the more correct term that's inside a geodatabase. And then this shapefile is the same version of the or the same data with a different version uh, for the shapefile. So we have our shapefile and we have our geodatabase. So three different versions of the same data. So let's look at the shapefile first. This is the original version of the data. And if we zoom in a little bit here, you can see the land cover types a little more closely. There's a legend there. And the big thing about land cover types is that they're meant to be mutually exclusive. You should only have one type of land cover at one location. It can't be two different things at the same time. So when I first got this data set, the guy that, that uh, gave it to me, I kind of, you know, this is just me, I just do this. I kind of went through it, started selecting things, exploring it a little bit. And when I selected this yellow polygon, I noticed that it overlaps with the beige polygon. So this is actually, I've selected this yellow polygon, but it's uh, under this beige polygon. Let me do a cross there so you can see the difference. So I right away I noticed like, oh, that's kind of a mistake. That's something that would need to be corrected because there's no topology here. There's no planar enforcement. It's a shape file. It's a simple data model. So these types of errors are just there. There's no way to flag them or easily identify them or to even correct them easily um, with this file format. If we zoom in more, you can actually see that there are little slivers that were created. So here's a sliver. These are supposed to line up. So th that white area is neither one land cover type or the other. It's no land cover type. So, and everything inside our field study area should have some kind of land cover type. So that's a mistake, the fact that we have this gap or this sliver. Same thing here with these overlapping polygons is they're tiny. I had to zoom in really far in order to be able to see them, but they're still there. And that's just something we want to avoid with something like land cover. So I converted the shapefile to a coverage using this tool here called feature class to coverage. And this is the result we get. And it may look the same to begin with, but now you'll see that this is actually a separate polygon that represented the overlap between the two before. Now, when I did this, the software didn't ask me which uh, feature class, or sorry, which land cover type it should go into. It just did it automatically and it chose to use the beige one. So now this is a polygon, this is a polygon, 
and this is a polygon. So those are three different polygons. So uh, automatically by converting it to a coverage, it's uh, automatically created the topology for it and it created these separate polygons so that it would uh, have planar enforcement. If we zoom in again, you'll see that there's this red area here that is actually now a new polygon. So that's, that's a polygon, and this is a polygon. They're small, they're very tiny. It didn't shift anything, it didn't edit the boundaries for me. All it did was say, oh, there's a gap there. I can't have that, we have to have a polygon there. So that's what it, I just made it red so it's easy to see. And then this other one, it's actually under, uh, overlapping the beige on top of the green. And so we have a little sliver polygon there. So it's not ideal that we have these sliver polygons, but at least we now have planar enforcement. With the GeoDatabase, topology is optional, which is nice. You can either have it or not have it. So we can create a data set and not have topology, but at some point later, we can always say, oh, you know what, we want to build topology for that and then go ahead and do it. We don't have to change file formats. We don't have to, to put it into some other thing. We can just have it inside the GeoDatabase like we already did and then just build topology when we want it. One of the nice things about topology in a GeoDatabase model is you can have topology between feature classes. So I'm not going to do that here, but if I wanted to, I could actually have something else, like let's say it was the parcel boundary for ownership or something like that, and I could make sure that the boundaries of the parcel line up with the boundaries for the land cover classes or whatever. I think of the GeoDatabase as more user-oriented from a topological point of view, is that with the coverage, it forced you to have topology and it was kind of tedious and time consuming and a little difficult to work with. The shapefile, you couldn't have topology at all. I think the GeoDatabase works better in that it's easier to build topology, it's easier to use it, and it's really done in a, in a way that's much more fluid or efficient or easier to sort of see where there's topological errors and to correct them. I heard this at a conference one time, I can't remember who said it, but I thought it was an amazing analogy for this, is that Topology in the GeoDatabase is like a spell checker for your map, is that you can give it rules to follow, and then it will flag those for you and tell you where those errors are, and you can go through it and decide whether you want to keep those errors, maybe it's not really an error, or be able to fix them. This is a great poster, you can download this as a PDF that shows all the different topological rules that are available in the GeoDatabase, so there's a lot of them. Some examples are things like, you know, making sure that points are inside polygons, such as state capitals inside states. You can have lines on top of lines between different feature classes, so to make sure things like bus routes are on top of roads. And of course, uh, this is an oldie but a goodie from the original uh, topology days of the coverage, is uh, being able to make sure that you have planar enforcement and you don't have overlaps between polygons. So let's look at our same data inside a geodatabase. So here's our geodatabase. I just called it jokershill.gdb. That indicates it's a geodatabase. And then the land cover is the feature class inside that GeoDatabase. So I could have tons of feature classes if I wanted. I've just got the one for now. That's all I need. Okay, same data. Now it's inside a GeoDatabase. To begin with, I don't have any topology, so it looks basically identical to what it looked like in the shapefile format. If I select that yellow polygon, I still have the overlap with the beige polygon because there's no topology at this point. It's just storing the data. And if I want, I can keep it that way. If it's not that important to me, depending on what this represents and what it's for, in this case, it's not a great idea, but depending on what I was doing, that might be perfectly fine. Or I can build topology if I want. In order to build topology in a geodatabase, you first have to create a featured data set. So that's what this indicates here. That's this little icon. So uh, in a quick nutshell kind of way, a featured data set make sure that all of the feature classes that are inside that feature data set all have the same coordinate system. You can think of it sort of like a folder where you can uh, organize your feature classes under different feature data sets. You can have as many of them as you want. But the reason that this is important in this context is that in order to build topology either inside one feature class or between them, the software wants to make sure that they're all sharing the same projection and coordinate system. And that's important because if you had different projections in the same topological uh, setup, then you wouldn't know for sure if the differences or if you know if there's overlaps or things didn't line up correctly would that be because of the projection or would that be because of some actual error in the data so it's a way of the software developers of kind of forcing you to make sure that all your data is sharing the same coordinate system because it's in the same feature data set before you can then build topology so then you can build topology i'm not going to go through the details of it here i'll have a separate demo video that will show you how to do that it's actually not as complicated as it looks here but uh, you just follow a wizard and kind of walk through a few steps. And when that's done, it will create a new topology for you. 
What that actually means is inside the GeoDatabase, there is actually now a new entry, a new thing that exists inside the GeoDatabase that's storing the topology for that land cover. And so once that's been made, it will ask you if you want to validate the topology now. And of course, I'm going to. So now this is the spell checker part where you can give it a rule such as must not overlap. That's the rule I, I created for my topology now. And it will then create a version of the data where it's flagging or showing you all of the places that are violating the rule that I've asked it to check for. So all of these red areas are areas where there are overlaps in our data set, which we don't want to have. So I won't go through the details of how you actually do that here. I'll do that in a separate video. But uh, the one thing I wanted to make sure is clear here is that there's still a human that needs to be involved in this process for building topologies. So for example, here, this is the the polygon, I've just made it so that it's hollow so you can see things better. But this is a, an error photo that I've put underneath that topological layer. So it's telling me that there's an overlap between two different polygons uh, and that I need to somehow decide which of those polygons this overlap should be in. So this land cover class is tolerant hardwood. That's what I've got here. And this one over here is field. Now, I don't know if you remember, but the way that this overlap area was actually designated was field. That was, uh, that's the where it was, it was field. But if you look at this, this area here obviously looks way more like the tolerant hardwood polygon than it looks like the field polygon. So you have an option is basically the software will ask you, you know, do you, this overlapping part, do you want to merge it with this polygon or with that polygon? And you can just tell it which one, you say merge and then it does it, it, it creates it uh, a new polygon that, that's the merged version of the two. So the overlap is gone but you have to be a knowledgeable GIS user in order to tell it which is the right way for it to do that merge. So you have to inform those decisions based on your own experience. So that's the comparison between the shapefile coverage and GeoDatabase. I wanted to just do kind of a really practical, pragmatic comparison so you could see you know, how the rubber hits the road is that you've got three different file formats and depending on which one of those you use, you will have options or not for topology and, and finding errors and either improving the quality of your data or just having to use it the way it is.